1996, I attended uh, the Rhine Research Institute at Duke University to study parapsychology. So you're asking, uh, what is parapsychology? Um, the first thing that it was interesting to me there uh, was remote viewing. And actually, Joe McMonagall came in and he did remote viewing. He had been uh, employed in the 70s by uh, the CIA through the Stanford Research Institute and had conducted remote viewing. That's the ability to see things uh, <laughs> that are, you know, millions of miles away uh, or hundreds of miles away or, you know, whatever. So remote viewing is be able to see um, things that you can't see with your eyes, but there's some other way of seeing it. Um, the second thing uh, that we studied was reincarnation. And Dr. Ian Stevenson, the head of psychiatry at the University of Virginia for 20, 30 years, documented hundreds of cases of children who remembered their past lives. 75% of Americans don't believe in reincarnation. But um, you might look at Dr. Ian Stevenson's work if you're interested in uh, whether you have a soul or not. Um, telepathy is being able to communicate and I, uh, without words. And I have a theory about this. Um, my theory is that uh, if you listen to um, tribes in Africa that have like cliques, I believe that they're communicating telepathically. And what I study, uh, which is Lacan, you know, language estranges us from reality. So um, I feel as if once we learn a language, then we kind of forego or give up our telepathic abilities. But, you know, um, there are all these studies done. Uh, one of them, what I, I just remembered right now, is in London. I think the guy's name is Ru Ru Rupert Sheldrake. And when people got up from their desks at work uh, at five o'clock, like their dog in their house, they had cameras, would like get up and like, would, like do their business and then like wait by the door. So like, you know, um, and again, if you study quantum physics and um, non-local communication, uh, if you believe in Vedanta or the Matrix, you could communicate with people not by using your iPhone, but through your thoughts. Again, most people don't believe in this. This is what we study in parapsychology, and they do some tests to try to um, establish this. The next thing was precognition. To me, that's fascinating because um, a precognition is the ability to know the future and how is reality actually occurring so that people could know things that are going to happen, right? And uh, it's about probability waves collapsing on one hand, but um, I've met people who um, have seen things and then they come true, maybe two seconds, maybe three seconds, but it leads me to believe that there are myriad realities occurring at the same time. And some people have the ability to bounce into other ones, which might be uh, a little bit uh, on a different time zone, let's say, because time is a construction of human consciousness, past, present, and future doesn't exist out there. It only exists in our heads. So precognition is the ability to divine the future. And then uh, clairvoyance, again, just knowing things that like you couldn't know through your five senses. And then the final thing, thing is healing, hands-on healing, like Reiki healing, things like that. So those are the things that uh, I studied in 1996 that are still fascinating to me um, in many ways. And um, I said, upon leaving Duke, trying to understand parapsychology through the lens of Western science is like trying to measure milk with a ruler. Just understand that there are other paradigms, that there are other ways of seeing the world that definitely don't fit into our paradigm, but they may be just as accurate.